logarithms. Couple things that I want you to remember from last year is that a logarithm in the essence of what the heck? It sounds kind of funky, it looks kind of funky. A logarithm, guys, is nothing more than an exponent. You're gonna get, however it's written, log base b of some number, log base b of some number is going to equal x, which is going to be <coughs> equal to the exponent. So our basic way, and actually flip your paper over real fast. We're gonna have a general logarithm written as log base b of a is gonna give me some number, okay? That's how we write a logarithm. And it's read log base b of, there's an of word that we stick in here, log base b of a is equal to c. For those of you that are not too neat on your handwriting, you need to make sure that this base, because the logarithm, every logarithm has a base. This base is called a subscript, whereas an exponent is above, above a number, a base, this base lies a little bit below. So I need to know for sure that you know that you know that you know that that's a base. Because there's a number then right here that's next to that logarithm, and I don't want to get those two confused. So it's log base b of a equals c. In um, our lesson with logarithms, we're also going to see ln, which is called a natural log. These can be interchanged when this logarithm has a base of n, or excuse me, base of 10. And we'll get, if that doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry about it, we'll get to that further down the road, okay? But a natural log automatically has a base of e. And most times, 99.9% .9 of the time, that e is not written. It's kind of like a square root. We don't put a two in there, but we just know that it's a two, okay? This natural log, has a base E, but it's written as, as just LN. Same thing, A of C, okay? So those are equivalent to each other. Natural log base E, that's what that is, but we just don't have the E written there. It's just assumed. Most of the time, we're gonna be dealing with a logarithm, all right, but understanding that when this base here is a 10, we can rewrite it using a natural log. Same thing, okay? A common log as what you'll see on your calculator. On the front of your calculator, you see the log button. You probably won't use that nearly as much as you might think you would in the section of logarithms because this base of this button here, log, is a base 10. So again, if the log rhythm is written such as this, we have an assumed base of 10. That is called our common log. And that's what you'll see on the front of your calculator. Okay, that's called the common log. All right, now, um, what I wanna do now is that's just how we write it. And when I say that a logarithm is an exponent, there is a method that, or, or understanding, the understanding of logarithms Every logarithm can be rewritten as an exponent. Every exponential function can be rewritten using a logarithm or natural logarithm. Every exponent, exponential function can be written using a logarithm. Every logarithm can be rewritten using an exponent. We had an example the other day where you were doing guess and check and trying to get something as close to 200,000 or whatever the number was as you possibly could. And you were just plugging in numbers and plugging in numbers into that exponent spot. Utilizing logarithms takes away the need for guess and check. This is our way of solving it algebraically without having to plug in number after number after number after number. That's where a logarithm is coming in and that's why we have logarithms, is to find out what is that exponent without having to do guess and check, okay? So that's the purpose. And so we're able to utilize going from logarithmic form to exponential form and from exponential form to logarithmic form in order to find um, that exponent or to find one of the other variables involved, okay? So one of the main things that we need to know when we're dealing with logarithms, you can flip this over, 
is that we have, and like I said, we've got log base B, and I'll just, I'll just use this generic form, log base B of A, we'll see, as our basis of where we're going to be headed. And then there's a little mantra that I like to live by with logarithms. And it goes like this. Once a base, always a base. Start with the base. And finally, it's all about the base. And I heard that that song's not popular anymore, so I will not start and sing it again. Okay. Once a base, always a base. You want to start with the base. Basically, it's all about the base. Okay? And that's important. This is mainly important when we're rewriting, when we're going from logarithmic form to exponential form, exponential form to logarithmic form. And if you understand that once a base, it's always a base, start with the base you that and, and understanding what I mean by that because the because there's a base in the logarithm there's a base there's a base in the exponential that's the same base okay that's the same base and actually I'm gonna say <coughs> Well, I'll, I'll leave it like that, okay? So this base, this base, the same thing. So once a base, always a base. And then when we go to rewrite it, we start with the base. Now, I get harassed unmercifully <coughs> in my department, in the math department, because I think a little differently. And, and you know what? That's okay. We all think a little differently. And I tend to come up with some really stupid, corny ways in which to remember things. All right, and here comes one of them. And you might have noticed, maybe not, but I have this really nice picture. And what animal is this? A snail. Okay, I had it. This is not a tortoise. This is a nice snail. I had a student get this for me because of, of what we're about ready to do. Okay, this is a nice snail. It's really pretty. Okay, so I have this snail to help for you to remember. And then had somebody make me this up here, and that's a really elaborate snail as well. Because what we're about ready to embark on is Meyer method of logarithms. It's called the snail method. Okay, it's called the snail method. Brie, put that down, please. We start, well, if you would draw a snail, and if you draw it like I do, it's going to look really bad, but if you draw a snail, you like have some squirrely stuff going on, you know. You kind of swirl around a little bit to get your snail going. And some of you in here can draw much better than I. But that just kind of gives you a general. Okay, Addison's up here about ready to lose it. Um, up here, you know, that just gives you a general idea of a snail. Okay, and or we can go the other way. Okay, this is the shell right there. I mean, come on. Right? Okay. So it's, 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 all right, just play with me here. Okay, so it kind of snails around. It kind of swirls around to make my little snail. So I call this the snail method because of that. And so what we're going to do on this first example, and this is critical, understanding how to rewrite from logarithmic to exponential and vice versa as basic. And this is in 3.3, 3, this is what we're kind of skipping over. This is what we're reviewing really fast, okay? and what you would have seen in Algebra 2. So my first example, log base 3 of x equals 9. What's my base? 3. Once a base, always a base. Start with the base. So I'm starting with the base. Okay, so 3 is my base. I'm going to use the snail method, <coughs> Meyer method of logarithms. I'm going to start with the base. And I'm going to snail around, and by snailing around, it's going to give me the order in which I write my exponential function. So I start with my 3, I go to my 9, and I end with my x. Start with my 3, 
snail around, hit my nine, and end with the x. So that's the order in which I write my exponential function. And I'm writing it as b to some number. It's going to give me y, okay, basically. So I'm going to have 3 raised to the ninth power is going to equal x. 3 to the ninth power is going to equal x. So that snail method, starting with the base. Once a base, always a base. Start with the base. Starting with the base, I snail around and end with the x. So it's 3 to the ninth power equals x. If you look at b, <coughs> my base is 2. I snail around. 2 to the x is equal to 8. We're not going to solve it right now. We're just going to get back into the groove of writing it in exponential form. Skipping down to d. 4 to the third power is x. 5 squared equal to y. Okay, as corny as it may seem, it helps to give you that order in which we write it because that is a basic for logarithmic functions is being able to rewrite it into exponential form. <coughs> okay, now let's say that we're in exponential form and we want to write it in logarithmic form. Once a base, always the base, stay with the base. Start with the base. So here I've got y equals 3 to the 4th. My equal sign, this, my base is on the other side of the equal sign, so my snail's going to go opposite. So there's my base, and I'm going to come around. So I know that base of that exponent is going to be the base of the logarithm. Once a base, always the base. I'm starting with the base. So I've got log base 3 of y equals 4. Log base 3 of y is equal to 4. Now I want all of your pencils down just for a second and all eyes to the board. At the beginning of this lesson, I said a logarithmic function is an exponent. And if you look right here, you can see this logarithmic function, that's what I mean, this logarithmic function, what is it equal to? 4, and in the exponential function, what position did the 4 hold? The exponent. Logarithmic function is an exponent. So that logarithmic function equals that exponent. All right, so let's look at B. Once a base, always a base. I'm starting with the base. And the base is on the, on the right side, so I'm going to go to the left. And I always end with that exponent in that order. So log base 3 of 27 is going to give me x. Going straight down, log base 3 of y is going to give me 5, is going to equal 5. Log base 4 of 64 is equal to 3. Okay, going from logarithmic to exponential, going from exponential to logarithmic form. And again, I tend to use the snail method, and if you guys used any other little method that you remember from last year that helps you by all means, stick with it, but making sure that you understand the order in which you write that because that is critical as we move forward. <coughs> Understanding that what we're doing today, there's no homework assigned to it. This is 100% review. We're going to be starting in with a little bit more, quite a bit more complex logarithms tomorrow. Okay, this is just our preview and kind of getting us back on pace. Okay, so the next section we're actually going to solve we're actually going to solve. So the first thing I want to do is I'm in logarithmic form. And if I had both the base and this number here given for me, I could use my calculator. But it's not. So I need to say, rewrite it in exponential form. 3 to the 4th is equal to x. What is 3 to the 4th? 
so x is 81. Just type that in your calculator. B, I have m to the fourth is equal to 81. How do I know that m is 3? Perfect. I could take the fourth root of both sides, so m would be 3. And if you also notice, that was the previous problem we just did. Okay, going straight down. 2 to the fifth is equal to 2x. And if you notice that 2x in that position there, that's where we're going to see a little bit more complex type of logarithms as we move forward. We're going to see binomials there. We're going to see some trinomials there and being able to solve through all of that. Okay, so understanding, again, getting a good basis before we complicate things even more. What is 2 to the fifth? So 32 equals 2x, therefore x is 16. And just directly below that, again, I have 2 to the 5th equals 4x. 32 equals 4x, therefore x is equal to 8. Okay, questions on, on the solving or the rewriting on either one of those. Okay, we have four generalizations that you would have pulled out on the regular notes from 3.3, but they're important enough that we need to know and understand these as we move forward to simplifying logarithms, which we're going to be seeing in 3.3 and 3.4. This first one says, and feel free, you guys are going to keep this sheet so feel free to add any notes that you need to to make sure that you understand it, okay? So I have log base b of one is equal to zero. If you understand a logarithm can be rewritten as an exponential function, you will understand using the snail method, b to the zero power is one. b to the zero power is one, anything anything raised to the zero power is always one. So if you see that base, or excuse me, if you see this number is one or this number of zero, vice versa, you'll know ex immediately the other will be zero or the other will be one. Okay, that's a given. So that's kind of a shortcut. Meaning, you might see some you know, things on, a, on the quiz that might seem a little um, intimidating but if you notice that this number here is a 1 or this number is 0, you can fill in the other just by knowing that. Okay? Second cheat or second little hint is that if my base and this number here are exactly the same, I basically can cancel them out and it's equal to 1. Okay? It's going to be equal to 1. So if this base and that base are there, I can almost, I can just cancel them out and I know my answer will be 1. And here's the reason why. If I have a logarithm base b and, and b raised to the y power, that's a y up there, again, if this logarithm base and the base of this exponent are the same, those cancel, and I'm left with just the exponent y. So please understand, I see some of you guys are kind of like getting droopy-eyed on this. This is critical. This is critical because this will save you immense amount of struggles. If this base of the logarithm and this base of the exponent are the same, they can cancel, and I'm left with that exponent. And then the last one, it's hard to see, but the base actually can be, the logarithm can actually be in the exponent position. If you can see that's log base b of x as an exponent, same principle. Now I just have it flip-flopped. That base and that log base B, I've still got the same bases. They're just kind of flip-flopped in position as they were above here, and I'm left with that exponent X, and they can cancel out. Because we are going to see more so in 3, 5, a lot of simplifying logarithms, and you will need to know these rules, otherwise you won't even move past step A. Okay? Questions on that? Okay, I want you to look at your calculators real fast.
and I want you to calculate log base two of three using your calculator. And I've already said that this log button on the front has a base of what? 10. So can I use that logarithm button on the front? No. So what the heck do I do? I'm gonna go to the math button. And mine is the capital A, and you just hit enter, and that will actually give you a place to put in your base two and then your number three, and you would get 1.58. Okay? So math base on there. Some of you may be sitting here with a 83, you don't have the math base button. That's okay. This is called using a common log um, in order to find the answer. You would take log three on your calculator, the log button on the front using your common log divided by log two. Once a base, always a base. That's how you know the base of the log goes in the denominator, the base of the fraction. Once a base, always a base. So log three divided by log two will give you the same answer. So if you do not have that math base button on your calculator, that's how you would solve that. Okay? Questions? All right.